I'm Sergeant Smith at the Seattle Police Department in the Office of Police Accountability. Today's date is March 22nd, 2018, and the time is 9.30. The OPA case number is 2017 OPA-1202. I am interviewing Officer Mark, could you please say your last name? Sagmon. A witness employee, also present, is Sergeant James representing Spog. This interview is taking place in the OPA office in Suite 1800 of the Pacific Building. Would you please state your name and spell your last name? Uh, Mark Sagmon. Last name is S-A-G-M-O-E-N. Sergeant? Uh, Sergeant T.J. Janes, J-A-N-E-S. And I'm Sergeant Leslie Smith, S-M-I-T-H. This interview is being documented with an audio recorder. Officer, do you understand the interview is being recorded and agree to be recorded? Yes. Sergeant? Yes. And have you received copies of the Garrity Advisement and the Seattle Police Officers' Bill of Rights outlined in your collective bargaining agreement? Yes. Do you understand them? Yes. And last, have you received notifications of the allegations in this complaint? Yes. Under the authority of the Chief of the Seattle Police Department, you are hereby ordered to answer all questions asked of you truthfully and completely. Failure to do so may result in discipline up to and including termination. Do you understand that? Yes. And as a sworn employee witness, you're advised that you are being questioned as a witness, and should your answers reveal violations of the Seattle Police Department rules and regulations, this interview will be stopped. You will be advised that your status has changed to that of a named employee, and you will receive a new notification and interview date. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So you're being interviewed as a witness. So just some general background questions first. Uh, what's your current assignment? Uh, first Watch Southwest Patrol. And which squad? Uh, Frank Sector. How long have you been there? Uh, it's about seven years. And how long have you been about with SPD? Eight and a half years. And so at First Southwest, are you in uniform? Yes. And drive a marked car? Yes. And are you equipped with Coban and ICV and uh, body worn video? It is now. Okay. And again, who's your supervisor? Uh, Sergeant E.K. Okay, so again, you're being interviewed as a witness for an incident that is alleged to have occurred back on November 10th of 2017. So on that date, you were registered to attend department training, um, the SPD 2017 Law Enforcement and Society Lessons of the Holocaust. Do you remember that? Yes. Did you attend the training that day? Yes. Here's a copy of the, the roster of attendees. So, according to the roster, there were several officers that attended that training that were from the Southwest Precinct. How did you and the other officers travel to and from that training? We took a department van. Who drove? I don't, I don't remember. Okay. About how many of you from that list rode in that van? Um, I think six of us. So, again, the allegations for this complaint are standards and duties that employees shall strive to be professional at all times and also bias-free policing that officers will not engage in bias-based policing. So prior to leaving the Southwest Precinct, how did you and the other officers, like, gather together to, to get ready to go to this training? We all gathered um, where we pick up keys in the, in the hallway and where the duty bags are. And that when you were getting together to go, did Lieutenant Dietrich ride in the van with you? Do you remember? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Did you hear Lieutenant Dietrich, the named employee in this case, make any comments or jokes that could be interpreted as unprofessional or biased? Yes. And what did you hear? Um, I was in the hallway um, outside the captain's office uh, in that area, and I heard him say that uh, he had family members that died at Auschwitz. And when asked how that happened, he said that uh, he fell out of the guard shack. And so was it just you that was there, or were there other officers present? I don't remember anybody else being present. So did you, when he said he had um, relatives die at Auschwitz, was it you that asked him how, or did he just kind of, was it kind of a delivery, or what? It was more of a delivery. And so after he said that, was there any other further comments made, or is it just that, and then off to training? No, I heard it and, and kept walking down the hallway. Was he talking to you directly, or is he talking to somebody else, and you just walked by and heard it? I don't remember if anybody else was present, so he, he may I, he may have been directing it towards me, but I, I don't remember if I was the only one there. Okay. Did you hear him make any other comments or jokes regarding Jews, Germans, and the Holocaust? No. Did you ever hear any third-hand reports from other employees making reference to hearing that comment or other comments from Lieutenant Dietrich? No. So what was your impression about hearing the lieutenant make that comment? Initially, I thought he was serious uh, when he mentioned, because he is German, I, I'm assuming, with the name Dietrich. Mm -hmm. And then as I got further down the hallway, it dawned on me that 
uh, he was probably joking. So when you you, would, you attended the training, you were at the training. Was Lieutenant Dietrich there at the training? Do you remember? Yes. Did you hear him make any other comments there? No. Have you ever heard Lieutenant Dietrich make any other comments or jokes that could be interpreted as unprofessional or biased on other occasions? No. Did you tell anybody else about hearing what he said there? Yeah, I mentioned it uh, when we were in the van. Oh, so with, like, with, 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 a, with a group of officers that I was with. And did any of them have any comments about that or say that they'd heard it too or anything like that? I could tell that uh, Officer Nova Sedlick was put off by it. Was there anything other further discussion that day or in the day since regarding comments or jokes made by Lieutenant G. Drake? Um, not really, not okay. that I can remember. All right. Sergeant James, is there anything you wanted to ask on behalf of Spock? Uh, Spock has nothing. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? The only thing I'd add is that during the Holocaust training, um, as, as far as Lieutenant Dietrich's demeanor there, he seemed very interested in, in the history of the Holocaust um, and seemed empathetic towards what those people went through, um, which I thought, I've, as far as the, uh, the comments, it didn't, it didn't reflect. Um, the two, didn't, the two didn't really match up. So he appeared empathetic at the training, but the, the comment or joke, or if it was, yeah. prior to, didn't... Didn't seem to... Didn't, af, after I heard him talking about the, the being empathetic towards the Holocaust, the, the joke to me didn't care, and he, you know, wasn't, he wasn't serious. Okay. Is there anything else you looked at? No. Okay. To maintain confidentiality of this investigation, you were advised not to disclose the information that was discussed during this interview except with your SPOG rep or attorney. Do you understand? Yes. That completes this interview. Again, today's date is March 22nd. 2018, the time is 9.37. I'm Sergeant Smith of the Seattle Police Department and the Office of Police Accountability. The date is February 26, 2018. The time is 10.32. The OPA case number is 2017 OPA-1202. I am interviewing Sergeant Dean E.K., a witness employee. Also present is Sergeant James, representing Spock. The interview is taking place in the OPA office in Suite 1800 of the Pacific Building. Sergeant, would you please state your name and spell your last name? Dean E.K. I-K-E-I. And Sergeant James? Sergeant T.J. Janes, J-A-N-E-S. And I'm Sergeant Leslie Smith, S-M-I-T-H. The interview is being documented with an audio recorder. Sergeant, do you understand your interview is being recorded and agree to be recorded? Yes. And Sergeant James? Yes, I do. And have you received the copies of the Garrity Advisement and the Seattle Police Officer's Bill of Rights outline in your collective bargaining agreement? Yes. Do you understand them? Yes. Lastly, have you received notification of the allegations in this complaint? Yes. Under the authority of the Chief of the Seattle Police Department, you're hereby ordered to answer all questions asked to be truthfully and completely. Failure to do so may result in discipline up to and including termination. Do you understand that? Yes. And as a sp sworn employee witness, you're advised that you're being questioned as a witness and should your answers reveal violations of the Seattle Police Department rules and regulations, the interview will be stopped and you will be advised your status has changed to that of a named employee and you will receive a new notification and interview date. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So just some general background questions first. About how long you've been with the Seattle Police? Twelve years. How long you been a sergeant? Uh, I'll be two years in April, so next month. And what's your current assignment? Uh, First Watch Southwest. How many officers do you supervise? Six. One is out of injured. I mean, sick leave. So. Sick leave. Okay. And when you're working as a First Watch Patrol Sergeant, do you wear a uniform? Yes. And drive a marked patrol car? Yes. And do you have in-car video? Yes. And mar and also, I guess, body-worn video? Yes. And again, you've taken those off, so we're not recording right now, right? Correct. So you said you have six officers. The questions are going to be asked regarding an incident that happened back in November about tr going to training. Were any of your officers on this list that are in your squad? Yes, it would be just one. Well, that would be? Mark Sagmon. Okay. Sorry, I mentioned on the recorder that this you're being interviewed as a witness employee for an incident that was occurred back on November 10th, 2017. On that date, you were registered to attend department training, Seattle Police Department 2017, Law Enforcement and Society, Lessons of the Holocaust. I, get there, you have, I gave you a copy of the roster. Did you attend that training? Yes. So the allegations in this complaint are standards and duties, employees shall strive to be professional at all times, and bias-free policing, officers will not engage in bias-based policing. So the following questions are going to be asked to address those allegations. 
According to the roster, several officers attended the training from the Southwest Precinct. How did you travel to and from the training? Uh, by one of the station masters' van. Who who from Southwest was in that van? Just name them. Sure, whichever whoever you recognize off that list. So myself driving, uh, Doug Jorgensen, be Todd Novi Sedlak, be John O'Neill. Melody Reels, Mark Sagmon, and I believe Todd Woodkey was with us. Is it possible that Officer Woodkey drove himself and didn't ride in the van? Yes, that could be. Okay. Did you pick up anybody else from other precincts, or it was just you guys went to it and then came back? No, it was just okay. to and from. Okay. So the allegations have to do with some comments that were interpreted as being unprofessional and biased. Did you hear Lieutenant Dietrich make any comments or jokes that could be interpreted as unprofessional and biased prior to going to that training? Yes. What comments did you hear? Uh, something about, I can't say it verbatim, something sure. about the Holocaust and, and cousin or uncle falling out of a guard tower along those lines. Okay. To whom did he say that, or where, under what context did he make that comment? Uh, I can't remember exactly where it was at the precinct. Um, so it was not in the van; it was in the precinct. Correct. Okay. And like, who was who was present? Who did he say, or how did he how did it come up in a conversation? I guess uh, it sounded like a joke um, pertaining. It wasn't directed toward me that I could tell. Um, it sounded like as I guess a hearsay from speaking with someone else that he was making a joke or that's what it came off as. Okay. Who was he who else was present to hear that comment? Do you remember? No, I can't remember. So you said he made a, a, the com his alleged joke or the comment that he made had to do with a relative you said falling out of a guard tower? Correct. Okay. What did you think when you heard the lieutenant make that comment? I perceived it as a as a joke he was telling somebody something like a repeated something he heard and then was repeating it. And what was your impression about hearing that comment or joke? What did you think about it when you heard that? Uh, it didn't bother me at the time. Have you heard the lieutenant make any other comments or jokes that could be interpreted as unprofessional or biased on other occasions? No. Did that comment, did any of the people who heard the comment men, make any mention to you or did it have any further effect on the work environment at Southwest Precinct after the comment was made? No. Nobody approached me to say they were offended by it or asked me to say that Lieutenant made an inappropriate comment. Nobody approached me for anything. Did you interpret that comment to be inappropriate? Myself, did I interpret it? No. Okay. So what did you do when you heard him make those comments or jokes? Uh, I was busy um, getting everything ready for the, the transport. The guys uh, overheard it. Sounded like a joke, so. Would it have been possible for an employee to be offended by that joke in your estimation? Sure, I mean, anybody can perceive anything somebody says as a inappropriate or. So you didn't report it to anybody else or have any more further discussion with the lieutenant about making that comment? No. Are you aware that as a supervisor you're required by policy, specifically 5.002 responsibilities of employees concerning alleged policy violation, that supervisors will investigate or refer allegations of policy violations? depending on severity, specifically mentioning biased policing when an employee uses the use of language that is derogatory based on 
one of the, the aspects of bias-based policing. Did you did that even did you even consider that being something that you should do in this case? Well, nobody approached me to say that. Um, hey, I was offended by it, or I should say, nobody was looking for somebody who had any facial expressions where they're, you know, offended by making like a, I guess would it be like a sour face or like kind of taken back by what Lieutenant Dietrich had said. Um, should they have reported it to me, I would have notified the captain, which is, you know, above the lieutenant, and then filed the OPA complaint under bias policing. And again, no one came to you or no one made any mention of it as no. being something that they were concerned about? Yeah, no one came to me or mentioned it. In your opinion, was that joke that the lieutenant made appropriate for the work environment? Would I say it is? Uh, no, probably not. So if you heard it, why didn't you report it if you, if you thought it wasn't appropriate for the work environment? Uh, because when somebody tells a joke, that's uh, hearsay, and it's direct. I mean, they're just two people talking amongst themselves. And you know, I was doing other things. Nobody approached me for it. Um, I found out about it was inappropriate by this OPA complaint. So I mean, yeah, had it not been right for the workplace, sure, but. There's nobody seemed too concerned at the time to make any um, to be offended by the, the okay. comment. I'm going to not ask you any further questions regarding the current allegations. I'm going to put like a pause on that on the, on those line of questioning because I think I've asked enough of those questions. I am though going to kind of, like I said put a pause on this and bring it to your attention that from OPA's point of view at this moment, um, that your hearing of that comment and your response or lack of response to hearing that comment made by the lieutenant um, will have to be addressed from OPA standpoint, okay? So um, as far as like adding you as from not just being a witness employee on this current one, but as a named employee for failing to take action regarding the policy violation. It's like I said, it's 5.002.5. Um, regarding that, I can either go ahead and continue to ask you further now, or per SPOG, I can stop it and then do paperwork and have you come back to address more answers to that question. It's up to you and you. If can, you think, we, can we pause for a second and just talk about it and then... I'll let okay. you guys talk about it. Then I'm going to go ahead and stop this part of the interview. Um, and I say the time is 10.43. I'm going to stop this and there we go. So that'll be the end of this. I'm going to say you're advised not to disclose the information that was discussed during this interview except with your SPOG rep or attorney. And you understand that? Yes. Okay. And again, it's 10.43 on February 26th. Okay, so today's date is February 26, 2018, and I'm Sergeant Smith of the Seattle Police Department and the Office of Police Accountability. The OPA case number is 2017 OPA-1202. I am interviewing Sergeant Dean E.K., formerly interviewed on this same case as a witness, now being interviewed as a named employee. Also present is Sergeant T.J. Jaynes, representing SPOG. And just for the recording, Sergeant, do you waive the five-day notification regarding participating in this interview? Yes. Okay. So this interview is, again, taking place in the OPA office in Suite 1800 of the Pacific Building. And for the record, would you please state your name and spell your last name? Sure. Dean E.K. I-K-E-I. -E and Sergeant Jaynes. Sergeant T.J. Jaynes, J-A-N-E-S. Okay. And again, it's being documented with an audio recorder. Do you understand we're being recorded and agree to be recorded? Yes. And Sergeant Jaynes? Yes. Okay. And... Have you received copies of the Garrity and Seattle Police Officers Bill of Rights outline your collective bargaining agreement? Yes. And you understand them? Yes. And then again, you were originally interviewed today as a witness and now being interviewed as a named employee, and you received the, five, the notification of receipt of complaint. And again, a classification notification is being emailed to you and will be also given to you here so you have a, a copy of it for yourself. Okay? 
Under the authority of the Chief of the Seattle Police Department, you're hereby ordered to answer all questions asked you truthfully and completely. Failure to do so may result in discipline up to and including termination. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. So, again, just in follow up to the interview we just were participating in regarding 2017 OPA 1202, just to be clear, you heard Lieutenant Dietrich make the comment and or could be interpreted as a joke regarding Jews, Germans, and the Holocaust. Correct. And what was the joke that you heard or the comment that you heard? Uh, something about a relative in a guard tower during the Holocaust. Okay. And when you heard that, did you, did you report that to anybody or did you follow up on that at all? No. Okay. Did you at any time think that that joke or comment could be interpreted as unprofessional or biased? Uh, not to me, but of course anything can be interpreted by anybody else. And, but nobody approached me to say that they were offended or they wanted to speak to me about a, inappropriate remarks or jokes made by Lieutenant Dietrich. So at that time, no, there's nobody seemed offended by it. Okay. And so then you said you, earlier you said you didn't think to make a report of it until you found out about the OPA complaint that you were listed as a witness? Well, I... From when, you, the when, you, when you received the classification report that listed you as a witness and the allegations, is that the first time you became aware that that could be interpreted as unbiased and unprofessional? Yes. Okay. And what was your response after seeing it listed out that way? That somebody obviously took it as, uh, as a biased complaint. Okay. Are you aware of the, of the policy, which is 5.002, responsibilities of employees concerning alleged policy violations, Section 5, that supervisor, supervisors will investigate or refer allegations of policy violations, depending on the severity, specifically biased policing? Are you aware of that policy? Yes. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, Sergeant Jaynes? No, it's Bob Is there anything else, Sergeant, that you'd like to add, Sergeant E.K.? No. Okay. Nothing further. All right. Then I will go ahead and to, to end this interview. Um, to maintain confidentiality of the investigation, you're advised not to disclose the information that was discussed during this interview, except with your SPOG representative or attorney. You understand that? Yes. Okay. That completes this interview. And again, today's date is February 26, 2018, and the time is 1114. I'm Sergeant Smith, the Seattle Police Department and the Office of Police Accountability. Today's date is March 28, 2018, and the time is 7.51. The OPA case number is 2017 OPA-1202. I am interviewing Officer Jorgensen, a witness employee. Also present is Sergeant Jaynes, representing SPOG. This interview is taking place in the OPA office in Suite 1800 of the Pacific Building. Officer Jorgensen, would you please state your name and spell your last name? Douglas Jorgensen. Jorgensen spelled J-O-R-G-E-N-S-E-N. Sergeant Jaynes. Uh, Sergeant T.J. Jaynes, J-A-N-E-S. And I'm Sergeant Leslie Smith, S-M-I-T-H. This interview is being documented with an audio recorder. Officer Jorgensen, do you understand the interview is being recorded and do you agree to be recorded? Yes. Sergeant Jaynes? Yes, I do. And have you received copies of the Garrity Advisement and the Seattle Police Officers' Bill of Rights outlining your collective bargaining agreement? Yes. Do you understand them? Yes. And have you received notification of the allegations in this complaint? Yes. Under the authority of the Chief of the Seattle Police Department, you are hereby ordered to answer questions asked to be truthfully and completely. Failure to do so may result in discipline up to and including termination. Do you understand that? Yes. And as a sworn employee witness, you're advised that you're being questioned as a witness, and should your answers reveal violations of the Seattle Police Department rules and or regulations, this interview will be stopped. You will be advised that your status has changed to that of a named employee, and you will receive a new notification and interview date. Do you understand? Yes. All right. So just... Some general background questions first. About how long have you been with SPD? 22 years. And what's your current assignment? Uh, patrol Southwest First Watch. How long have you been out there? Uh, since the precinct opened. So that's... Two, since 2003. Wow, that long already. Whew. Maybe 2004. So 14 somewhere. years or so? Yeah, something like that. Okay. And what squad are you in? William Sector. Who's your supervisor? Uh, Tony Ferragamo. How, how long has he been your supervisor? He just recently got there, so he got there approximately a couple of weeks. I was out, I was out on uh, long-term 
uh, sick, so he got there about two weeks before I went out there. So I think the beginning of January is when he got there. Okay. And prior to him, it was Sergeant Askew. Askew, okay. And then when you're working, you're in full uniform, drive a marked patrol car, all yes, that. Yes, okay. correct. Do you work with a partner? No. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so you're being interviewed as a witness employee for an incident that's alleged to have occurred back on November 10th, 2017. On that date, you were registered to, to attend department training, which was SPD 2017 Law Enforcement and Society Lessons of the Holocaust. Do you remember that training? Yes. Did you attend that day? I did. Okay. I provided you with a list, a roster of people who attended that training. Just a quick review for yourself about how many of those people do you see on that roster that are from Southwest Precinct? I see six, not counting myself. Okay. And then um, how did you travel to and from the training? In a uh, department van. Do those other six employees ride with you in the van? Uh, not not all of them were in the van. Okay. No. Do you know? Do you remember who was in the van? Or uh, I believe it was um, uh, Sergeant E.K. Uh, Officer Nova Sedlak. Um, Officer Rios, Officer O'Neill, and Officer Sagmon, I okay. believe, were in the van. Okay. So the allegations in this complaint are standards and duties. Employees shall strive to be professional at all times, and bias-free policing officers will not engage in bias-based policing. Are you familiar with those policies? Yes. Okay. In your own words, what is that bias-based, bias-free policing officers will not engage in bias-based policing? What does that mean to you? That they won't uh, have bias based on somebody's uh, race, um, religious preferences. It just follows the city mantra on, on um, being biased as far as uh, sexual orientation, even political affiliation. Okay. And then again, the standards and duties employees shall strive to be professional at all times. What, do, in your own words, what does that mean? That you'll try to p present a, the city in a good light and be uh, professional in your workplace and in your daily duties and your interactions with uh, other em employees and citizens. Okay. So the allegations are Lieutenant Dietrich um, is alleged to have made comments or jokes that could be interpreted as unprofessional and biased. Did you hear Lieutenant Dietrich make any comments or jokes on that day or any other day that you would have interpreted as being unprofessional and biased? I, I didn't hear him make any, any comments or jokes on that day um, that would be unprofessional or biased. Okay. The only, the only thing that he did say was that he was the first one to go to the um, Holocaust training, and he came back and told us in roll call about the training, and then at the, he said that, well, the Germans were actually really good people. That was, and I, I just thought that was in poor taste. I didn't, I didn't think it was unprofessional bias. I thought it was in poor taste to return from that type of training and say that, the, you know, come across that the, that the Germans were really good people. Sure. So it's been alleged that he made a comment about specifically there was a comment made that day prior to going to the training that he made a comment or a joke about relatives dying in the prison camps, specifically Auschwitz. Did you hear any third-hand reports about that comment or joke, or did you, you obviously you said you didn't hear anything directly? I heard that third-hand that he had said that. And when did you hear that? Um, that might have been the day that we went to the training which would have been uh, November 10th. Okay. And what was the comment you heard did you, or that you that were told? I, I heard, um, and Mark Sagmon told me this, was that 
uh, Lieutenant Dietrich said that he had a relative die at Auschwitz as well. The relative had fallen out of a guard tower. Okay. What was your impression about hearing that third-hand comment? Well, if if that's true, that you know, if he actually said that, that would that would be offensive because you know, just prior to going to this training, I read the the diary of Anne Frank just because I was I was curious. So, and you know, it sets a a, a sad time in the world and and. For somebody to make jokes of, of a terrific event like the the, the Holocaust is, is is not acceptable. It's just you know it's it's nothing to joke about. So I, I it would, if that was true, I, I would say that would have been offensive. Okay. Have you heard, Lieutenant? Do you make any other comments or jokes at any other occasions other than you said roll call after going to the Holocaust that he went to the Holocaust training early on and he, he told the roll call about it. Yes. And then the allegations from this day. Has there been anything else going on that you ever heard him say anything that could be considered biased or unprofessional as far as jokes or offhand comments? No. Okay. Sergeant James, is there anything you want to add? Or ask? Is nothing. Okay. Is there anything else you want to add? No. Okay. To maintain confidentiality of the investigation, you're advised not to disclose the information that was discussed during this interview, except with your SPOG rep or attorney. Do you understand that? Yes. That completes this interview. Today's date again is March 28th, 2018, and the time is 8 o'clock a.m. I'm Sergeant Smith of the Seattle Police Department and the Office of Police Accountability. Today's date is February 26, 2018, and the time is 9.50. The OPA case number is 2017 OPA-1202. I'm interviewing Officer Todd Novasedlak, a witness employee, also present as Sergeant James representing Spock. This interview is taking place in the OPA office in Suite 1800 of the Pacific Building. Officer Novasedlak, would you please state your name and spell your last name? Todd Novasedlak, N-O-V-I-S-E-D-L-A-K. Sergeant James? Uh, Sergeant T.J. Janes, J-A-N-E-S. And I'm Sergeant Leslie Smith, S-M-I-T-H. This interview is being documented with an audio recorder. Officer, do you understand the interview is being recorded and agree to be recorded? Yes. Sergeant? I do. And have you received copies of the Garrity Advisement in the Seattle Police Officer's Bill of Rights outlining your collective bargaining agreement? Yes. Do you understand them? Yes. And have you received notification of the allegations in this complaint? Yes. Under the authority of the Chief of the Seattle Police Department, you are hereby ordered to answer all questions asked of you truthfully and completely. Failure to do so may result in discipline up to including termination. Do you understand? Yes. As a sworn employee witness, you are advised that you're being questioned as a witness, and should your answers reveal violations of the Seattle Police Department rules and regulations, the interview will be stopped. You will be advised your status has changed to that of a named employee, and you will receive a new notification and interview date. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, so just some general background questions first. About how long have you been with SPD? 25 years. And what's your current assignment? Uh, patrol Southwest Precinct, First Watch. How long have you been there? About? Uh, three years. Okay. And who's your supervisor? It's uh, Tony Ferragamo, Sergeant Ferragamo. And as uh, First Watch Southwest, do you wear full uniform? Yes. And drive a marked patrol car? Yes, I do. Is that equipped with in-car video? Yes, and it is. I see you're wearing body warm. Correct. Are you recording us? I'm not. Yeah. So... The, you're being questioned as a witness on an incident that was alleged to have occurred back on November 10th, 2017. And on that date, you were registered to attend department training, SPD 2017 Law Enforcement and Society Lessons of the Holocaust. Did you attend that training? Yes. I gave you a copy of the roster, and that's you. you that's when you signed in on that, right? Correct. Okay. So the allegations in this complaint are standards and duties. Employees shall strive to be professional at all time and bias-free policing. Officers will not engage in biased policing. According to the roster, several officers attended the training from the Southwest Precinct. Do you recognize names on there from Southwest? Uh, from Southwest, yes. Uh, we have Sergeant Dean E.K., uh, Doug Jorgensen, who's in my squad, uh, myself, of course, uh, Melody Rios, who's in my squad, Mark Sagmon, who's on uh, our watch in uh, Frank Sector. And uh, there he is, Todd Wibke, okay. who's uh, like CPT. He's out of uh, Southwest Precinct. Okay. Um, how did you get? How did you travel to and from the training? Um, a, uh, um, a van, precinct van that Sergeant Ek had uh, arranged so that we could all ride together. Okay. So, 
Regarding the allegations, did you hear Lieutenant Dietrich make any comments or jokes that could be interpreted as unprofessional and biased? Not directly, no. Did you hear those? Did you, if you didn't hear it firsthand, how did you know about them, or how did you come to know about them? Uh, from Officer Mark Sagamone. Um, and what did he tell you? Mark Sagamone, when we were waiting to get into the van, um, I forget what time we were leaving. I had went out to the van first, and, and the rest of the group that, uh, that were on this roster were still inside the precinct. Um, and then Mark Sagamone, when the group came out to the van, Mark Sagamone sat behind me, and he, he tapped me. He said, uh, what's the effect of Todd? You really you missed a doozy, the lieutenant uh, trying to be funny again. And uh, I just rolled my eyes. I said, uh, what now? And Mark Sagamone relayed that the lieutenant had told the group what was the effect of, um, I lost family in the Holocaust, too. They fell out of the guard tower. What, what happened after that, after he told you about that? I, Mark said when he, he not apologized, but he said, I, I shouldn't have told you that. He knew that I was really offended. Um, I think Sagamo knows, too, um, about my uh, uh, Jewish ethnicity. He knew about, all of us in, in the first watch knew about um, previous comments, uh, dispersion comments that, that Lieutenant Dietrich had made about the Holocaust. Um, and that was in my presence. That was. What comments did he make about the Holocaust? When the day after he went to the training uh, early in. He being the lieutenant? Sorry, yes, Lieutenant Dietrich. He had gone to the training when the commanders had to go to the Holocaust training first. And that was early in 2017. Um, the day he came back, we were inquisitive, wondering, you know, what the training was about. And, and we, we asked the lieutenant. And he went on for, for a few minutes talking about it. And then he ended with the comment, the one th if, if, if there's one thing I took away from this training, it's that we Germans know how to rally together for a cause. And that was in front of our squad. And that was that comment was made sometime after he just recently, or I mean, shortly after he took the training himself. It was the day or day, you know, one or two days after he had taken the training. Okay. So when he made that comment, you said in front of your squad, was it was it like a roll call or something? Correct. So when you said squad, is that you said earlier that that includes uh, Officer Jorgensen and Officer Rios? Um, no, that was earlier in the earlier in in the year. So present, and the squad has changed. Present in the squad. Back then, there was myself, Doug Jorgensen, um, Joel Nark, Jason Ross, and Andy Bass, and I'm trying to think of when he went out, um, Joel Houston. After that comment was made, was there any response? There was, the, there, was, the there, was, there was no response. The, 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 I think, as I recall, the, the, the question has just, just ceased because I was stunned, absolutely stunned, that he would make a comment like that, having gone to the Holocaust training. And, and that's, you know, that's what, there was other things that encompassed the training. We had to go to the museum and see some of our artifacts and stuff. But that was the bulk of the training, okay? It was the Holocaust. And that he would make a comment and, and, and make light of it and, and, and you know, that the only thing he took away from it, that, quote, we Germans really know how to rally together for a cause. The cause, in my mind, was the extermination of six million Jews. Um, there was no, as I recall, like I said, no further questions after that. I think the rest of the room was as stunned as I was. I, I couldn't even bring myself to, to say anything. I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that I just heard that come from our lieutenant. Sure. So then moving forward to the comment that was made before you went to the training here back in November, you were not in the van, but the other officers were in the van and, or, and heard him say that. Other officers were still in the precinct. The van was outside. I was in the van waiting for oh, them. I had been in the so van. So he made the comment inside the precinct. Correct. Do you know what officers were present when he made that comment? Everybody came out as a group. Uh, like I said, I got into the van first, and they came out about five minutes later. So there was um, Dean E.K., Sergeant E.K., there was Melody Rios, Mark Sagmon, Doug Jorgensen, and Todd Whipke. I, 
I, I asked Sagamon when, when he told me uh, the, the comment that the lieutenant had made uh, out loud about, you know, I lost people in the Holocaust too, they, or I lost family in the Holocaust too, they fell out of the guard tower. And I turned around, I looked at, in the van, I looked at Sagamon, and I says, does he know I'm Jewish? And Sagamon just kind of put his hand, he shook his head like, like in disbelief. I says, does he know? I said, do you guys know that, that I had family murdered in Auschwitz? And, and Sagamon again apologized, said, I shouldn't have told you. I said, that's fine, that's fine. And I just ended it and stared out the window. Was the and, did the lieutenant ride in the van with you? Too? No, he didn't, he didn't ride with us, but he was at the training, which, which was odd because I asked somebody, I said, we knew that he was going to be the monitor. And I inquired of people going, I said, didn't he already go? And somebody, I forget who said, he's been to a couple of them. He, he, he stands in back and monitors it. Was there any further comments by him while he was acting as monitor at the training itself? None. Since you didn't hear it firsthand, but you heard it from Officer Sagmoen. Correct. Did you hear any other officers report that to you, or is it just this officer? No, it was, it was just Sagmoen. Okay. That combined with the earlier comment, was did you ever have any conversation with the lieutenant about the comments regarding no. your heritage or anything like that? Okay. No. What's your impression about hearing the lieutenant make that comment? Other than that you said personally you were shocked. I'm, I'm, I, was, I was offended that, that anybody, regardless of, of where they're employed or their rank, would make such a, a inflammatory and insensitive comment, regardless of, the, of whether they know or not that you know, officers may or may not have uh, you know, a Jewish heritage. Um, to, 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 to say that. Either comment just just stuns me. I think it's it's. Uh, so regarding the comments, did it have any effect on the work environment? With me? Oh, absolutely. With you or the other officers? I, don't, I can't speak for the other officers. I. But with I, you, how, uh, did it, how did it affect you and your work environment? Um, in my mind, uh, every every day since since that. I think I, I look at uh, Lieutenant Dietrich as somebody who thinks that the Holocaust was a joke, who thinks that the, the, the murder of six billion Jews is a joke. Um, he just makes light of it. And, and if, if you think it's a joke, then in my mind, you don't think that the Holocaust ha happened. And connecting dots in my mind, here's somebody who has no regard for other ethnicities. Um, I, I, I have absolutely no contact with him. I avoid all contact unless he has, uh, you know, some direct question or greeting. If he says good morning, I say good morning. Other than that, I have absolutely no conversation or light banter with him at all. Have you heard the lieutenant make any other comments or jokes that could be interpreted as unprofessional or biased? No. To your, to your knowledge, was it reported to a supervisor or anybody else? No. Has the lieutenant come to you since this investigation was opened and brought anything to your, t I mean, has he brought it up to you or talked to you about it? No. Sergeant James, is there anything you'd like to add? Spog has nothing. Officers, anything like you would like to add? No. To maintain confidentiality of the investigation, you're advised not to disclose the information that was discussed during the interview except with your spa rep or an attorney. Do you understand that? Yes. That completes this interview. The date, again, is February 26, 2018, and the time is 10.03. I'm Sergeant Smith of the Seattle Police Department and the Office of Police Accountability. Today's date is February 14, 2018, and the time is 12.45. The OPA case number is 2017 OPA-1202. I'm interviewing Officer Todd Wibke, a witness employee, also present as Sergeant Hilton representing Spog. This interview is taking place in the OPA office in Suite 1800 of the Pacific Building. Officer, would you please state your name and spell your last name? Officer Todd Wibke, W-I-E, B as in boy, K-E. And Ron Hilton, H-Y-L-T-O-N. And Sergeant Leslie Smith, S-M-I-T-H. This interview is being documented with an audio recorder. Officer, do you understand the interview is being recorded and agree to be recorded? Yes, I do. And Sergeant? I do as well. And Officer, have you received copies of the Garrity Advisement and the Seattle Police Officers' Bill of Rights outlined in your collective bargaining agreement? Yes, I have. Do you understand them? Yes, I do. And have you received notification of the allegations in this complaint? Yes, I have. 
Under the authority of the Chief of the Seattle Police Department, you are here by order to answer all questions asked to be truthfully and completely. Failure to do so may result in discipline up to and including termination. Do you understand? Yes, I do. And as a sworn employee witness, you're advised that you're being questioned as a witness and should your answers reveal violations of the Seattle Police Department rules and or regulations, the interview will be stopped. You will be advised your status has changed to that of a named employee and you will receive a new notification and interview date. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So... In general background, you are assigned to Southwest CPT. Yes. And you've been working in the Southwest Precinct for about how long? Um, my whole career, 18 years. South, Southwest. And as a CPT officer, what hours of the day do you work? Um, they vary. Um, right now I'm working from 0500 to 130, 1330. So your shift overlaps first watch and second watch? Yes, it does. Okay. So you're, you're being interviewed as a witness employee for an incident that was alleged to have occurred back in November of 2017. And on that date, you were registered to attend department training, which is entitled SPD 2017 Law Enforcement and Society Lessons of the Holocaust. Do you remember that training? Did you attend? Yes, I do remember it. And so I gave you a copy of the class roster. I just wanted to make sure you're, you're handwritten at the end, and that's your signature. Yes, that is me, yes. Okay. So the allegations in this complaint are standards and duties. Employees shall strive to be professional at all times and bias-free policing. Officers will not engage in bias-based policing. According to the roster, several officers attended this training from the Southwest Precinct. How did you, as a member of the Southwest Precinct, travel to and from that training? Um, I drove in my own pickup truck. So you didn't travel with the other officers in a, in a van or anything? No, I did not. Okay. I met them uh, prior to the class. There was a coffee shop across the street, and a bunch of them came in there, and we had a little bit of coffee before we went into class. Okay. Did you hear either directly or secondhand from any of those officers you had coffee with that day about any remarks that Lieutenant Dietrich may have made or any jokes that he could have made? Prior to prior to the class, no. I know there's hard feelings in that first watch uh, with the lieutenant, and I strive very hard to stay away from all of that. Okay. So, to the to your memory, you don't remember hearing Lieutenant Dietrich making any jokes prior to the class or after the class? Um, I know during the class, I had a conversation with him because I was extremely upset about the content of the training. Um, being both German and a police officer, I was very upset at the information, the way it was presented to us. So you, you had a conversation with Lieutenant Dietrich in the class? Um, he was standing there, um, and actually he was very professional with me and kind of calmed me down. It wasn't getting to the point where tempers were flaring. It's just everybody. the general mood in the, in the room was very uh, aggravated amongst all the officers. Did Lieutenant Dietrich make any comments or presentation to the class during the training? He, if, if I remember correctly, we were all sitting in seats, and he was standing off to the side and in the back, and I felt that his presence there was almost like when I was in the academy and the boss was standing behind you to keep you from losing your temper and being professional. So I thought he was there as a, a professional monitor more than anything else. Okay, so to your memory, you didn't hear him make any jokes about the training, about... Germans, about Jews, about the Holocaust, anything like that? Absolutely not. Okay. I don't have any further questions. Nothing. Okay. Anything you'd like to add? No. That will end the questions here. And to maintain confidentiality of this investigation, you're advised not to disclose the information that was discussed during this interview except with your representative or an attorney. Do you understand? Yes. That completes this interview. Today's date, again, is February 14th, 2018, and the time is 1251. Sergeant Smith, the Seattle Police Department, and the Office of Police Accountability. Today's date is February 28, 2018, and the time is 1020. The OPA case number is 2017 OPA 1202. I am interviewing Officer Melody Rios, a witness employee. Also present is Officer Carrie Zeiger, representing SPOG. This interview is taking place in the OPA office, Suite 1800 of the Pacific Building. Officer, would you please state your name and spell your last name? My name is Melody Rios, R I O S. Carrie Zeiger, Z-I-E-G-E-R. And Sergeant Leslie Smith, S-M-I-T-H. This interview is being documented with an audio recorder. Officer, do you understand the interview is being recorded and agree to be recorded? I do. Both ways. Okay. And Officer Zeiger? Yes, ma'am. And have you received copies of the Garrity Advisement and the Seattle Police Officers Bill of Rights outlining your collective bargaining agreement? I have. Do you understand them? Yes. 
And lastly, have you received notification of the allegations in this complaint? I have. Under the authority of the Chief of the Seattle Police Department, Department, you are hereby ordered to answer all questions asked of you truthfully and completely. Failure to do so may result in discipline, up to and including termination. Do you understand that? Yes. And as a sworn employee witness, you're advised that you're being questioned as a witness, and should your answers reveal violations of the Seattle Police Department rules and regulations, this interview will be stopped. You will be advised your status has changed to that of a named employee, and you will receive a new notification and interview date. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Before I ask you about specifics for this incident, just some general background questions. About how long you've been with SPD? Approximately four or five years. And where where are you assigned? Currently Southwest First Watch. How long have you been working there? Uh, for First Watch, about a year. Getting used to that schedule of sleeping and not sleeping? Yes. Okay. And so who's your supervisor? Currently Tony Ferragamo. Okay. How long has he been your supervisor? About a month. Oh, okay. Who was your supervisor before that? Willie Askew. Okay. And you work patrol, wear yes. full uniform? Yes. Coban? Yes. And body worn video? Yes. Are you recording us now? No. Whew. Good thing. All right, so that was just a trick question. All right, so you're being inter interviewed as a witness, employee, for this incident that occur is alleged to have occurred back on November 10th, 2017. On that date, you were registered to attend department training, which is SPD 2017 Law Enforcement and Society Lessons of the Holocaust. Did you attend the training on that day? I did. I gave a, there's a list of the class roster there. From that list, how many of those people went to that training work at Southwest Precinct that you recognize? You, you can say it out loud. Um, how about, how, how about you just approximate? Uh, no, just tell me the names you recognize. I oh. should say that, yeah. Sorry. Okay, the names I recognize are... E.K. Jorgensen, Nova Sedlak, Rios, Sagmoen, as well as Whitkey. Okay. And then, so, did you all travel together to the training, with the exception of Officer Whitkey? Yes. Okay. How did you guys get there? By a carpool van. Okay. So, the allegations in this complaint are standards and duties that employees shall strive to be professional at all times, as well as bias-free policing that officers will not engage in bias-based policing. So, according to that roster, you, you all traveled there together, those of you from Southwest Precinct. Prior to leaving the precinct and that travel together in the van or whatever it was, did you hear Lieutenant Dietrich make any comments or jokes that could be interpreted as unprofessional and biased? I did not. Did you hear him make any comments or jokes regarding Jews, Germans, and the Holocaust? I did not. Prior to leaving the precinct, where did you guys muster up, or how, how, did, that, how did it go that you guys all got together to drive to the, front to the training? Some of us were in the precinct area, as, and some of us were already waiting inside the van. As it was getting time to leave, we just got on, everybody got inside the van. And so where down. were you waiting? Do you remember? I was in the, I was in the van. You were in the van, recall. okay. Did you hear any third-hand reports or from other employees about a comment that would have been uttered by the lieutenant? I did. What did you hear? I had heard that the lieutenant had made a comment in regards to a family member falling out of a guard tower. A family, his family member? How, in what context would that have been? The context was as a joke, was how the officer had phrased it, that he also had family members who had died in the Holocaust, and it was a someone who had fell out of the guard tower. So you didn't hear that directly from the lieutenant, you heard it? Third hand from yes. another officer. Okay. What did you? What was your impression? Impression about hearing that joke? Uh, that I didn't hear it directly. That some other officer had mentioned it inside of the bus. Okay. Yes. On any other occasions, had you ever heard Lieutenant Dietrich make any comments or jokes, not third hand, that could be interpreted as unprofessional or biased in your, in in front of you? Like in front in of me? Yeah, that you've heard directly. 
Uh, the only thing was during the training itself when I heard some comment about Germans rallying together for a cause. Could you explain that? What, what, it was during the Holocaust training? During, yes. And the lieutenant was there yes. at the training. And he made a comment about the Germans rallying? Rallying. Rallying together. Rallying together? Yeah. And that was during the training itself? Yes. Did, was he saying that in terms of a joke? Or did he believe that? Or, I mean, how, was that, how did that come up in the, in the I training? I don't believe, I don't remember the context mm -hmm. of how it was related to the training. Just simply that some comment made about he made a comment. Germans rallying together for a cause, and that was it. Did anybody else hear that comment? Uh, possibly not that I'm aware of. Oh, so, but it was, so you were still at the museum when that took place? When yes, you heard it that? was during a break period. And was he talking directly to you, or just you just overheard him say it? I just overheard it. Okay. What's your impression about hearing that comment? I it wasn't directed at me. There was nothing in context with the class that it was related to. So, to me, I I had no impression. Okay. All right. Officer Zeiger, is there anything else that you would like to add? Nothing from the guild. Is there anything else you would like to add? Not this time. All right. To maintain confidentiality of this investigation, you were advised not to disclose the information that was discussed during this interview except with your SPOG representative or attorney. Do you understand that? Yes. That completes this interview. Today's date is February 28th, 2018, and the time is 10:28. I am Lieutenant Strozier of the Seattle Police Department and the Office of Police Accountability. Today's date is March 28th, 2018, and the time is 06:10 hours in the morning. The OPA case number is 2017 OPA-1202. I am interviewing Lieutenant Dietrich, a named employee. Also present is Lieutenant Bockler. This interview is taking place at the OPA office in Suite 1800 of the Pacific Building. Lieutenant Dietrich, please state your name and spell your last name. Seth Dietrich, D as in David, I-E-T-R-I-C-H. Lieutenant Bockler, please state your name and spell your last name. Scott Bockler, B-A-C-H-L-E-R. This interview is being documented with an audio recorder. Lieutenant Dietrich, do you understand this interview is being recorded and agree to be recorded? I do. Lieutenant Bockler, do you understand this interview is being recorded and agree to be recorded? Yes. Lieutenant Dietrich, have you received copies of the guarantee advisement and the Seattle Police Officer Bill of Rights outlined in your collective bargaining agreement and do you understand them? I have. Have you received notification of the allegations made in the complaint? Yes. Under the authority of the Chief of the Seattle Police Department, you are hereby ordered to answer all questions asked of you truthfully and completely. Failure to do so may result in discipline up to and including termination. Do you understand? Yes. Lieutenant Dietrich, where are you currently assigned? I am the first watch commander in the Southwest Precinct. And how long have you been in the Seattle Police Department? Uh, almost 33 years. And how long have you been a lieutenant? For, well, I've been a watch commander for two years. I've been a lieutenant for about a year and a half. Okay. Approximately how many employees do you supervise? Uh, normally between 18 and 21. And what are your uh, duties as a watch commander? Uh, I, just, I supervise the watch, uh, make sure the sergeants have their squads ready, and make sure staffing levels are appropriate, uh, respond to major incidents. Okay. You're being interviewed as a named employee for an incident that was alleged to have occurred November 10, 2017. The complaint alleges that you made unprofessional and biased comments regarding the Holocaust, Germans, and Jewish persons and that comments were heard by employees of the Southwest Precinct. Are you familiar with this incident? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Did you attend the Holocaust training uh, that is mandatory training for the Seattle Police Department? I have. And how many times have you gone to that training? I've attended it as a monitor probably half a dozen times. Okay. Has anyone ever uh, talked to you about making 
comments that they thought were unprofessional or biased? No. Okay. The training that you acute, that you uh, attended as a monitor, what does the training address, and what is your role of that training? It's uh, a historical perspective on law enforcement and uh, the era of the uh, Nazi regime in Germany. Uh, my role as a monitor is to uh, monitor the officers that are attending uh, to ensure that everybody maintains a professional demeanor. And concerning professional demeanor and uh, the policy standards and duties, employees shall strive to be professional at all times. Um, how does that apply, or what does that mean to you? Uh, it basically means that their behavior is um, professional, that they are not uh, becoming insulting or derogatory towards the instructors or anybody else in the class, uh, that, uh, you know, they, you know, that they follow policy and obey the rules as, as it occurs in the class. And uh, what about bias policing? How does bias policing apply? In this incident? In any incident. Well, I would, I would suspect that uh, in order for there to be bias policing, first there would have to be policing, and that a law enforcement decision would have to be made based on a person's um, stat status within the community. On that date that you attended as a monitor to the training from the Southwest Pre, there were several employees from the Southwest Police registered to attend that training. Did you attend the training also? I did. And how did you travel to and from the training? I drove my uh, uh, lieutenant's vehicle. So you didn't travel in the van with officers and sergeants? No. It is alleged that prior to leaving the precinct, you made a comment or joke that could be interpreted as unprofessional and biased. It has been alleged that you made the comment something to the effect that you lost relatives at Auschwitz too, that they fell out of the guard towers. Does this sound accurate to you? No, I recall making a joke, but I certainly did not make it prior to the training on this day. Uh, what was the joke that you made? Um, I was, it was after the training, and I was talking to an officer who, uh, with the community police team, in my office, and we were discussing, I think it was a day or two later, and we were discussing the training, I asked him what he thought of it, uh, and then he made a joke, uh, I'm not sure what it was at the moment, but, uh, I responded with this particular joke. Uh, are you asking me to tell you the joke? <laughs> Yes, please. Okay. I just, I, uh, as I recall, I told him that uh, I lost a relative at Auschwitz, and he said, really? And I said, yeah, he fell out of a guard tower. Okay. Was that joke or comment meant to be truthful fact, or was it supposed to be humor? It was supposed to be humor. Okay. And you said there was only one person that was there that heard the comment? Yeah. Yes. And who was that person? I believe that was Todd Wuki. And uh, to, so I'm sure I understand. You were in your office, and just the two of you were present. Correct. Okay. Additionally, it has been alleged that you made another comment, something to the effect that your takeaway from the training is that we Germans know how to rally together for a cause. Did you make that statement? Absolutely not. Are you aware that such comments would, could be interpreted as biased and, and or unprofessional if you had made them? I, that would be unprofessional to make a comment like that. I'm sorry? That would be unprofessional yeah. to make a comment like that. Did any of your subordinates approach you to discuss their reaction to those comments? No. Regarding the allegations of professionalism, policy directs employees not to to not use language that is disrespectful toward any person. Do you believe your comments or did you make any comments that could have been interpreted as disrespectful? I don't believe that the joke that I did make was intended to be disrespectful towards any one individual or group. 
regarding the allegation of bias policing, policy directs employees to not express any derogatory comments concerning discernible personal characteristics. characteristics. Do you believe uh, that you made any comments that could have been interpreted as derogatory? Towards a group? Okay. Towards a group or a person? I do not. Okay. So I want to make sure I understand the who was it you were talking to again in your office? I believe, if I remember correctly, it was Todd Wookie. Todd Wookie. And when you made the joke um, about the guard tower, did he express any um, concern over the joke, or did he laugh? Or as I recall, he chuckled. Okay, and it was meant to be funny, not fact. Correct. Did you have any relatives die in the Holocaust? Uh, as far as I know, I did not. Is there anything else that you would like to add to your statement? Yes. Uh, for one thing, to go back, uh, my wife is part Jewish, and she's participated in Reformed Judaism. I have two stepdaughters who are half Jewish, uh, and I've always respected their faith and their history. Uh, this particular complaint, I believe, is retaliation for a frontline complaint or a frontline investigation that I completed on Officer Nova Sedlik. Uh, is my understanding from what other officers have told me is that Officer Nova Sedlik has bragged about filing this complaint, and he's filed an almost identical complaint with the uh, uh, EEO office. Uh, there's been a history of harassment and intimidation from Officer Nova Sedlik towards me. Uh, I have had more complaints since I took over as a watch commander in the Southwest Precinct filed against me than I have had in my entire career. Uh, to go back, uh, this particular file, these files represent five OPA and three EEO complaints that have been filed against me. And these are files that you brought to the office? These are files that I brought in. This is a, uh, this is an OPA. Uh, investigation. It was filed by an anonymous employee. Um, officers are telling me that Officer Nova Sedlik was bragging about having filed that particular complaint. Uh, this is an EEO complaint that was filed by Officer Julius Howard. Uh, once this issue was resolved, Officer Howard came to my office and we had a rather robust uh, discussion. During the discussion, he told me that he didn't want to file this, but that Officer Novoselic encouraged him to do so, and he felt obligated to file it. Uh, this is a uh, uh, OPA complaint from Officer Doug Jorgensen. Uh, this is a complaint of retaliation uh, because he had testified against me in a, an OPA matter. Uh, the original complainant on this call, without going into detail of the investigation, because I believe it's still an open investigation, uh, but the original complainant on the call on this incident was Officer Nova Sedlik, who came to me under the guise of uh, wanting to have provide code 4 for Officer Jorgensen, uh, but uh, alleged a major policy violation uh, that put me in a position where I felt I needed to make a referral to OPA. Uh, I felt that Officer Nova Sedlik did that on purpose, that he uh, had an axe to grind with Officer Jorgensen at that time, and that he felt he could kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, by putting me in a position where I either would file the complaint against Officer Jorgensen and risk a retaliation complaint from him, or not take action with OPA, and then he could turn around, he could have turned around and filed a failure to take action complaint against me. Uh, this is a, uh, another OPA and an EEO complaint that uh, I just recently had an interview on, so as far as I know, it's still open. Uh, but it was also filed by Officer Nova Sedlik in retaliation for me uh, directing his supervisor to take care of a particular matter with him. Uh, that's pretty much all the files that I have at this point. Any of those officers, Officer Nova Sedlik, Officer Howard, Officer Jorgensen, were any of those officers present on this date um, that you were the uh, monitor for the Holocaust train? On this particular date, I don't recall if they were present on, on this date. Uh, there was 
a nother date i believe where i actually ended up giving them a ride down to the training in my p r u and the day that you gave them a ride were there any jokes or comments made similar to the ones we just discussed there was some general banter going back and forth oh i do recall a joke being made to me about my responsibility as having a germanic background and i did say at that point on that drive i did make the comment that you know as germans were nice people but as a group we tend to rally so earlier in this interview you said you didn't make germans know um how to rally so are you saying you're just now remembering or yeah i'm just now remembering okay okay and as the question was before it was that germans rally to a cause and this that's not what i said what i said was as a group we tend to rally as a group you tend to rally and who was present when you said that um officer howard officer narc i believe officer jenkins alex jenkins and officer ryan blake and officer no psych was not there no he was not and you've never made that comment in his presence i have not okay and was that the only instance that you made that comment as best i can recall yes okay and do you remember the date that when that occurred i would have to go back and look in my calendar to make sure okay and you were driving your piu yes sir. and what does piu stand for patrol interceptor utility i believe okay and that's you rode from the southwest precinct to the training yes and i drove them because parking's uh, an issue down there right, right? so we okay. went on one car okay do you have anything else to add oh boy um like i said this particular complaint i believe is in retaliation um this these ongoing series of complaints have created in my mind a hostile work environment um i actually have had to change some of my own behavior where i actually turn my phone off when i get home so that i don't look at my emails uh because one of the chief concerns is that i'm going to get a five day notice and it's going to ruin my day off so uh you know it's it's a to me it's a hostile work environment and he's and officer nova selic has created this lieutenant bachter do you have anything to answer i have a clarifying question uh for you and i'm not really expecting much of an answer but it seems that there's the possibility that that there is a concurrent uh investigation for this incident going on in this office opa and eeo at the same time and i'm a little unclear whether that's on purpose or if just kind of what the status is because it seems um like there are potentially issues if we're having multiple interviews over the same conduct happening at the same time so uh we will try and clarify exactly what's happening with that yeah i don't really have a good answer for you i understand what you're saying i didn't expect that you yeah. did but i just want to uh, have this uh, part of the record no i understand i understand okay to maintain confidentiality of this investigation you are advised not to disclose the information discussed during your interview except with your representative or attorney do you understand i do this completes the interview today's date is march 28 2018 and the time is 628 a.m.